Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, join us for a story about Clinton Lake and when it was constructed. Then join us for a story about bears and the different varieties we have throughout the state. Next, we'll learn about the life of Amelia Earhart, and we'll end with a look at the life and career of Arthur Capper. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Well, hello again. I'm Frankie C. on Wren Internet Radio. We do this from uh, the Wren Studios. And there I'm Frankie C. And here on Around Kansas, I'm Frank. So, uh, how do you do? Um, Deb, of course, is out in western Kansas, and she'll be doing some stories today. I, I know we're after Memorial Day weekend, and I hope you had a great uh, experience on the holiday. And I'm sure that you also remembered those that made it possible for us to have that holiday. Now, yeah, this show is about people, places, and things in the state of Kansas. And... I, I don't know if you take the Capital Journal, you got one of these. It's 50 Reasons to Hit the Road in Kansas. It was in the uh, May 20th, Sunday, May 20th uh, edition of the Capital Journal. And let me tell you, it really is full of places to, to do. And you can do them within a three hour drive of uh, wherever you are. I mean, there, there's the Boot Hill Museum, of course, out in Dodge City, Kansas. Uh, you know, I mean, there's just, this thing is just full of all kinds of things. The Kansas Historical Society here in Topeka has, uh, if you haven't been there in quite a while, of course, the, uh, the exhibits change all the time, and it's a fan fantastic place. And there's a hiking trail there, too, if you didn't know that. Uh, you go through various kinds of, uh, of uh, prairie and, and trees and everything else. And so it's really a great place to go spend the day, really, because uh, they do have a snack bar there, too. So you can have refreshments and enjoy it under a shade tree in their, in their picnic park. Uh, let's see here. Oh, gosh. Uh, the Evil Knievel Museum, of course, here in Topeka. But let's go west because Hayes, Fort Hayes, has all kinds of things. And, of course, there's Fort Wallace where Deb hangs out all the time. And we have uh, Banner Creek Science Center, an observatory. You can go there, and yes, it is an observatory, and take a great look at the moon and, and stars and other planets. Uh, and another place, too, is Baldwin City. They have a, a dinner train excursion, which is a fantastic thing. I mean, it's a 22-mile uh, excursion of a train. You have dinner. And you can just have dinner and, and, and a few uh, adult beverages, or you can enjoy some theater, you can enjoy some music, and it's in Baldwin City, and, and that is a great experience, too. And let's see here. Well, we said Hayes, and I uh, didn't know if you knew, but uh, Museum of World Treasures uh, and the Tallgrass uh, Prairie National Park, you can go there, and you can hike, you can camp. It's a fantastic place. I, I could spend the rest of the day just telling you about what's in here, but many of our shows have also told you about many other great places that you can, you can go and visit and enjoy in the state of Kansas. So this summer, you can go to a lot of places and do it, most of them, within a three-hour drive. Okay? Sounds like fun to me. So have a great summer. Now we've got, uh, Deb has some great stories today and we'll be seeing those after you take a look at this. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. 
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Summer is busy at Tarwater Farm and Home. We have just about everything you'll need for your summer projects and we're consistently competitively priced. Tarwaters can help make your grass and garden grow. And we have a huge variety of equipment to cut it. If you have a farm, Tarwaters has the products and equipment to keep it going strong. And our expanded parking lot will make it even more convenient to shop. So come see us at Tarwater Farm and Home in Topeka. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to Kansas Gateway to Dedicated in 1975, 1,500-acre Clinton State Park is located on the northeast shore of Clinton Reservoir. The reservoir itself has 7,000 surface acres of water and reaches a depth of 55 feet. It supplies water for more than 100,000 people in northeastern Kansas, but six times that number visit the park each year. While the reservoir and state park serve the region well, the Wakarusa River Valley Heritage Museum reminds us of the cost of this public works project. According to the museum's director, Martha Parker, rumors of damming the Wakarusa River had persisted since the early 1900s. The potential impact on the farmers of the valley was not taken seriously until the Army Corps of Engineers began buying property for the project in the mid-1960s. Families who had filled the land for generations were forced to sell and move out. The Corps came to be regarded in much the same way as the invading Missouri border ruffians had been a century earlier. The residents were concerned not only about the loss of their land, but of their identity and history. The valley was a minefield of history, from the Bloomington Guards, the Underground Railroad, the First Colored Volunteer Infantry Regiment, and the home of free state abolitionists, mostly Quakers, who paid with their lives to make Kansas free. A society incorporated to preserve this story, and the museum in Bloomington Park was born. Unable to save the home of Colonel J.C. Stella, the organization moved to the farm's milk barn, which has been renovated and expanded. The grounds are also home to the Freedom Ring sculpture that represents the communities destroyed by flooding and the legacy of those who live there. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. This is one of my favorite bits that I make. The name I give this bit is a derby bit. I had a roan head horse that was running through the bridle with the chain bit, and I made this bit here. It, it, it really worked good on that horse. I sent this bit to Donnie McNeese, who breaks in cattle for Jeff Smith and Ike's Cox, and I said, ride this bit on a lot of horses, see how you get along with it. They did. He said, bull, that's really a good bit. Fits a lot of horses. Then I give this bit to my good friend, Brent Wright, who I make bits for. And I said, see how this bit will work on a reining horse. I call him up a couple months later. I said, Brent, how you get along with that bit? And he said, good. He said, you don't need it right this minute, do you? And I said, no. He said, good, because I'm down here in Texas and I just want a big fraturity riding that bit. And when Brent got home, he gave me the buckle that he won the fraturity with. 
I'm, I'm really proud of that buckle that Brent Wright gave it to me and also that he got along so good with my bit. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. American black bears were once common in Kansas, especially in the eastern parts of the state, according to Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism. But they were gone by the late 1800s. Black bears are found in nearby states. They occur in parts of Missouri and Oklahoma near southeast Kansas, and they live in New Mexico and Colorado, not far from southwest Kansas. Grizzly bears once lived in Kansas, but they too were gone by the early 1800s, and there have been no verified sightings of these animals in modern times. Today, a transient black bear will sporadically appear in the southeast or southwest corner of the state, but there's no evidence of an established wild population living in Kansas. The few confirmed black bear sightings are typically of young males wandering into Kansas from another state. For a few years in the early 2000s, an American black bear was documented in Morton County in southwestern Kansas each spring. It was reportedly fond of feasting on spring wheat and may have come from Colorado or New Mexico. In June 2015, a juvenile bear was seen near Weir and in Galena in Cherokee County. It may have wandered into Kansas from Missouri, Arkansas, or northeast Oklahoma. Kansas does not have a hunting season for bears, and they may not be killed without reason. Landowners are permitted to destroy wildlife, including bears, found in or near buildings on their premises or when destroying property. However, reasonable efforts must be made to alleviate the problem before killing the animal. If you think you've seen a bear and have a photograph, video, tracks, or other evidence that you believe will substantiate your sighting, contact the Wildlife and Parks Fur Bearer Biologist at Poria Research Center and Survey Office, and don't forget to share a picture with us here at Around Kansas, too. Some folks believe it is just a matter of time before a wild population of black bears is reestablished in Kansas. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center. Right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day, and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged, or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we showcase my renowned frontier military and Native American artifacts. Behind me you see a touch of fall. We put together not only the beauty of mica high walking 
who is the first graduate of West Point of the Northern Cheyenne people and a dear friend, but also a Hudson's Bay blanket that I have here in the gallery. The unique opportunity that I was able to have was we unveiled this painting and surprised Micah at Custer Battlefield, a true honor. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. With nearly 100 years of broadcasting excellence, Wren Radio is now live on the internet playing hit songs of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Join Jack Diamond, Mac Collins, Les Glenn, Frankie C., Antonio Barber, Wings Callahan, and the real Don Steele for some of the best music ever recorded. Hear it at wrendigitalmedia.com or get the Wren Oldies Radio app in Play Store or App Store. And tell Alexa, good times and great oldies on Wren Internet Radio. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. There's a newly discovered similarity between Amelia Earhart and the castaway whose partial skeleton was found at Nicomoro in 1940, according to a release from the Earhart Project. The bones suspected by their discoverer of being Earhart's were dismissed by British authorities after a doctor judged them to be male. The bones were subsequently lost and the entire incident forgotten until the Earhart Project discovered the original British files in 1998. The file included the skeletal measurements the doctor made. An evaluation of those measurements by forensic anthropologists led to the conclusion that they were consistent with a female of Earhart's height and ethnic origin. That was 18 years ago. Recently, in preparing an updated evaluation of the bone measurements, one of the doctors noticed a peculiarity among the arm bones. The forearm was the proportionately longer bone of the arm. Statistically, women born in the late 19th century had an average radius to humerus ratio of 0.73. In other words, if the castaway was a middle-aged, ethnically European woman, she had forearms considerably longer than average. Researchers wondered if Emilia may have had similarly longer than average forearms. To answer that question, we call the forensic imaging specialist, Jeff Glickman. Selecting an historical photo of Amelia, where her bare arms were clearly visible, and working with Dr. Richard Jans to identify the correct points on the shoulder, elbow, and wrist for comparing bone length, Jeff found that Earhart's humerus to radius ratio was 0.76, virtually identical to the castaways. The match does not, of course, prove that the castaway was Amelia Earhart, but it is a significant new data point that tips the scales further in that direction. Amelia was born in Atchison at her grandparents' home in 1897. She and her navigator disappeared while attempting to circle the globe in 1937. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farm sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses in rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery, 
And so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months. And I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights. I can throw. I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all-new Better Horses Network. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Been brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Arthur Capper was proud of the fact that he was the first governor born in Kansas. Born in Garnett on the heels of the Civil War and just weeks after the Lincoln assassination. Capper was to find himself in the midst of history. According to the Kansas State Historical Society, at the age of 14, he became a printer's devil with the Garnett Journal. After graduation from high school, Capper went to work as a typesetter for the Topeka Daily Capital. Working his way up at the newspaper, he became an editor and served as correspondent for the state legislature and U.S. Congress. In 1892, Capper married Florence Crawford, daughter of Governor Samuel Crawford. The couple had no children. Capper left Kansas and took a position with the New York Tribune. He worked later as a congressional correspondent in Washington, D.C., before returning to his native state. Capper purchased two Topeka newspapers, The Mail and The Breeze. He later acquired controlling interest in the Daily Capital. By 1911, the Saturday Evening Post called Capper's Capital one of the best and brightest dailies in the West. Capper became the 20th governor of Kansas, serving two terms, followed by five terms as U.S. Senator, 1919 to 1949. In 1927, Capper purchased WIBW among the first radio stations in the state. An advocate of children's welfare, Capper established a number of events and programs to assist the state's youth. The Capper Birthday Party was a popular summer event from 1908 until 1951 when the flood forced its cancellation. He established agricultural clubs that loaned money to students so they could start modest businesses. These clubs eventually merged into the 4-H movement. To benefit children with disabilities, Capper formed a foundation in Topeka in 1920. He also organized the Goodfellows Club of Topeka. Capper became one of the nation's leading publishers of the decade and was featured on the cover of Time magazine. He served as the chair of the Senate's Agriculture and Forestry Committees during the 80th Congress and chose not to seek re-election in 1948. Arthur Capper died December 19, 
1951 in Topeka. I'm Frank, she's Deb, and we'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy Street.